All right, today we're going to discuss how to properly make a cut with the OxyFuel setup. We have our acetylene and oxygen setup here. We're gonna pressure up our cylinders and uh, make a few cuts. As I'm making the cut, I'll explain some details. First of all, we, like always, start by inspecting, making sure our hoses and our regulators are nice and snug. Our hoses are in good shape. We do that, we're fine, we're ready to go. We inspect our area. We make sure that there's nothing, there's nothing flammable around that could possibly catch on fire. Trash, paper, wood, even a jug of gasoline. We want to start by opening our main valve of our, our oxygen cylinder, a couple turns, and setting our pressure. We want at least 30 on the oxygen. Do the same thing here with the acetylene. Notice we're standing away from the pressure. Pressure is going that way towards the regulator. Always stand opposite. About a half a turn on the acetylene. And then we pressure up our regulator to about 5 PSI. Depending on the thickness of metal they're cutting, if you were to cut 1 inch, 2 inch thick steel, we would pressure up our settings a little more. But for quarter inch, what we're doing here, Five and 30 is plenty. Okay, we're pressure up. We pressure it up. We're, now we have gases all the way up to our torch. Our cutting attachment is attached. We're ready to go. We, um, we wanna secure the torch in, with both hands. I like to hold, I'm right-handed. I like to hold the torch and open the knobs with my left here, the acetylene and then the oxygen. But while I'm igniting it, I support it with the tor with my hand here. I have my striker attached to my pants so that I'm not having to look for my striker all the time. So I just bring the torch up to there and ignite it. You want the acetylene to be uh, coming out there fluttering about at least 12 inches. Too little acetylene is going to give you a very weak flame. Too much is not going to make a good cut. So you want just about 12 inches out there fluttering. You can see the end of the flame. Then you introduce the oxygen slowly till you start seeing the change in the flame. You want a neutral flame. Just notice how the flame is turning blue. That's the oxygen being introduced and then you eventually come out with a neutral blue flame. Notice how the cones are still moving when I give it the blast of oxygen in the, the center hole. I don't want that. I want it not to move at all, so I gotta open more oxygen. If you ever notice your flame is very light blue, because you need more acetylene. So you might want to open up a little bit more acetylene. Notice how the flame changed. Should be good there. What we're going to do is cut some straight cuts. The travel speed as I'm coming across is very important. If you go too slow, the kerf is going to be wide and the dross is just going to kind of fuse everything back together. So you want to go as quick as you can across there without it stopping your cut. We're going to make a couple of lines and then we're going to show you how to make a perforated hole in the center like that. Like always, we want to support our torch steady. I have my weight here on my left elbow on the table. You want the tip about just about touching the cones on the metal. You preheat. Once you're preheated, you press the lever and start making the cut. Going nice and steady all the way. If the piece doesn't fall off, that doesn't mean it's a bad cut. But when it does, your speed was right, you were in good shape, 
when you turn the metal around you should see very little dross there you can just kind of chip it off with a chipping hammer as you need to this chipping hammer here has this chisel in you would knock it off um, lots of times when we're fabricating and we need to cut a lot of times they're straight cuts but they also could be half circles on the corners But notice how my hands are always steady. And able to make the cut. It's a lot harder when you're in the air right here, trying to be steady to make a real steady cut. So here to, to make a circle, I like to start by basically drawing out a letter E, starting in the very middle got to perforate so you got to make sure it's a little hotter your preheat once you see it melting then you slowly introduce the oxygen because if you don't you're gonna make all that bubble up and shoot up into your face so slowly start the cut by going like a letter E you use your hand to eye coordination to follow Sometimes we may need a two different shapes. It just depends on your steadiness. You can draw a line. I don't particularly have a line right now, but if I needed to, I could just go any shape that I needed. the dexterity that you have to be able to make the cut real steady with time you'll learn you'll see that you will get good at it the practice makes perfect notice I turn my torch off sometimes when we're working on a project you uh, you want to turn your torch off but if uh, you're not going to work anymore with the torch you're gonna make sure you shut the cylinders down so, Again, turning the main valves off, taking the pressure out of the hoses, and backing off on the screws. The reason why I say you're going to continue working is because every time you purge your hoses, you're losing gases. So it doesn't, it wouldn't be cost effective if you were to be uh, purging your lines every single time you're you're making a cut. If you're continuing to use a tr tr uh, torch setup for a while, leave it on, you're, you'll be fine leaving it on. Just make sure like draws and scrap that falls like that doesn't end up hitting the hose because that'll burn right through a hose and we'll have a, a fire on the acetylene real quick. As you can see, I made a few cuts. Um, the name of the game is being real steady, holding your breath so that you're not breathing. And uh, it all starts with making sure that you have your setups pressured up right. Your adjusted torch with neutral flame is good. Lots of times we have a very dirty tip and that's gonna affect the cut. The cleaner the tip, the better the cut will be. So uh, take your time and clean out the tip with the tip cleaner. Especially the middle hole, the oxygen blast comes up so that you can obtain a nice clean cut. On this you'll do an assignment answering a few questions that will attach to the video and uh, that way you have uh, that in place as well.